Hi everyone, welcome to Walks with Moss. Today I'm going to show you some of the mushrooms in my neighborhood. People seem to like seeing mushrooms. We're starting out actually in my yard. Our first mushroom I have not ID'd yet. I think it's a foliota though. I should really take it inside and ID it. Maybe I will. There's a few of them here. They're growing on wood and they're orange. That's what makes me think foliota. But let's keep going because farther up here is a mushroom that I know for sure is a foliota. And it's a really cool one. Today is October 31st, Halloween. Okay, here we have the golden foliota, foliota aravelia. Look at that. Isn't that kind of a creepy looking mushroom? With its uh, scales on the stem and the scales on the top. We don't know if that's edible. The verdict is out. It's growing on, I think this is a willow tree. It's dropped all its leaves. But here it is. The golden foliota. I don't see these very often. So it always gets me kind of excited when I do see them. I've heard they're edible, but they don't taste good. And they smell funny when they're cooked. I'm just going to leave it alone. Growing here along with it is the liverwort, Perella navicularis. A liverwort is not a moss. It's its own separate thing. Okay, let's see what else we can find. There's just so much stuff out here this year. But there's a couple really exciting mushrooms that I definitely want to show you. The next one coming up is one I really like to see, and I only see it maybe every two or three years. We're just barely out of my yard now, walking on this little trail. Let's check these out. I'm not sure what these are. No, I have no idea what these are. I really should pick one of these and try to ID it. They're pretty cool, aren't they? Yeah, but I don't know what they are. They're just growing in the leaf litter down here. Let's keep going. The people that lived here before me had kids and a bunch of motorcycles. And even though this wasn't actually their property, but the adjoining property, they made, they made lots of little trails and stuff. And I'm taking advantage of them. I'm bringing us out here to the road where I found a really cool mushroom. It's just a little ways down here. Here we are. This is a Lucinum. It's a type of bolete. It's, I think, growing with a pine tree in this case. And it is enormous. This one's just about done. There was another one here that I picked and I have in a bowl at home, it's opening. And yesterday there was a third one back in here growing. Maybe there, it's gone. It disappeared. I was kind of looking forward to watching it grow. This is a scaber stock or a lucinum. Edibility is kind of controversial. I've eaten them in the past. They didn't taste good, so I don't bother. I just think they're a beautiful mushroom. I don't know if we can see the scabers on the stock that gives it its name or not. Yeah, kind of, if, if we can get the exposure right here. Let's see. It's pretty dark under here. See these spots on the stem? Scaber stock. And these stems are so solid. I don't think bugs like these. If you cut this open, it squeaks. It's so solid. So I wish this was a better tasting mushroom and that its edibility was better understood because it seems to be really resistant to bugs. As it gets older, it kind of curls up. So Lucinum, and I think it's growing right here with this uh, lodgepole pine tree. Okay, let's head down the trail across the street from my house now and see what we can find. On the road here we've got another bull eat, which I'm pretty sure is going to be a swillis. I've been watching it for a couple days, it's growing fast. It's really solid though and it's not slimy on top, so maybe it's not a swillis. 
I'm just gonna keep watching it grow. I need to figure out what this is. The top, I think, should be slimy, so maybe it's something different. Then we've got these cool little polypores back here. I don't know their name, but I'll try to figure it out and maybe post it on the video. They've got teeth down here. They're really tough and leathery, not edible. Here we go. This is just the little trail that goes into the green diamond woods across from my house. I actually own the first 15 feet of the woods here from the road, but now we're on green diamond land. Great place to take Bella for a walk. And here's our first interesting mushroom. We've got a coral mushroom. Maybe I'll pick this and eat it later. I do like eating coral mushrooms. They're almost impossible to ID. The ones that have a gelatinous base, I think, are ramelina, and they can give you diarrhea. I've been eating the tan ones and the white ones, and they taste great, and I haven't had any ill effects. They're supposed to be a yellow-tipped one that you shouldn't eat. I've been avoiding all the brightly colored ones, but I think some of the brightly colored ones are edible, too. I might do a little bit of research before I think about eating this one, though. Coral mushroom. Speaking of coral mushrooms, I have not found a cauliflower mushroom yet this year. Maybe I won't. Okay, let's keep on going down the trail. Here's something coming out of the ground. Oh, it's a, I think it's a swillus that's fallen over. Okay, let's keep looking. Here we've got a really common puffball mushroom, Lycoperdon perlatum. Lycoperdon literally in Latin means wolf fart. And perlatum has to do with these studs on the stalk like pearls. And almost everyone knows about these. And they are edible if you eat them before they start growing brown inside. So if there's any trace of brown, then they're no longer edible. These little white slash brown mushrooms are everywhere. I really want to find out what they are. The funnel makes me think maybe clitosopy, the, the funnel shape of the gills, but I don't know. I don't know what these are. I should take these home and ID them because they are everywhere. Maybe they're a Calibia or a Satharola or something along that line. They seem to be... Um, just eating duff. They don't seem to me that they're, I don't think they're uh, mycorrhizal mushrooms. I don't think they're in partnership with a tree. So the trail goes over that way, but let's leave the trail and head this way. First, let's check out these mycena. There are so many different kinds of mycena. Here's one of them. Mycena, commonly called bonnet or bonnet mushrooms. Here's a mushroom that can be really prolific. This is Lucaria lucata, and they come in this uh, orange color and a purple color. And sometimes they're called the deceiver because they can look so different and be so many different colors. The purple variety has a different name. Lucaria lucata, see they have interesting gills. They're different lengths. They're short ones and long ones. They grow everywhere that's disturbed on the roadsides. They're just so prolific. Unfortunately, they don't taste good. They are edible. And I mean, I've tasted them. I cooked some up last year when that was about the only mushroom we could find. And they just don't taste good. Bella is really enjoying her walk as usual. I am so glad that I moved. And I can just pop out my door and be in the woods. Don't have to drive anywhere. Here's a whole bunch more of this Lucaria lucata. It's just everywhere. They have a stringy stem. That's one way you can tell them from like some Lactarius that looks similar. I sure would love to find some candy cat mushrooms. I've still never found them, but I've heard they're out right now, so I really should be searching for them. 
Okay, here's another bolete, just like the one that was beside the road that was growing. I'm going to take this home and try to key it out. It probably is a swillus, even though it's not slimy on top. I'm just not sure. Might be a little bit buggy. I'm going to take this home and put it in a glass of water and watch it open up. It's got to be a swillus. It's just not slimy for whatever reason. Up here we've got a big Lycoperdon perlatum. Right there, Jim to Puffball. Still pretty solid, but still not in its edible stage. It'll be a little bit brown. The Wolf Fart Puffball. I had really high hopes that I'd be finding chanterelles back here at the beginning of the year, but no. I mean, it looks like a good spot for chanterelles with all the moss and youngish Douglas fir trees. But no chanterelles have been found back here so far. Here's a cool looking mushroom. Again, don't know what it is. It looks like it might have pink spores. Here we have a Lactarius. This one is slimy. I don't know if candy caps are ever slimy. I really want to find a candy cap. But I don't think this is a candy cap because it's slimy and it doesn't have the orange peel texture. And let's see if the stem is hollow. Yeah, the stem is kind of hollow. These bleed when you cut the gills. That's how you know you got a lactarius. See the white latex coming out there? There's a lot of different of these little orange lactarius mushrooms. One of them is the candy cap. But I don't think this one. There's still a cool little mushroom to find though. Here's a big colony of coral mushrooms. I ate some just like this yesterday and the day before. They were tasty. I don't know if these ones get bigger or not. I'm going to remember where these are though and pick some for the pot later. These are just so delicious. I wish I had brought a bag with me. I don't know why I didn't. Maybe I'll grab some of these and put them in my pocket. And they're bigger than they look because there's quite a bit more to them underground than there is above ground. So I have no idea what these are other than coral. I just don't know how to ID coral mushrooms. It's just too tricky. So it's a little bit scary eating them. But I've had these ones before. I know these ones are good. Here's an interesting mushroom. I don't know what it is, but I think it's a cortinarius. I brought some of these home to try to ID. I'm working on it now. I got a spore print, took some microscopic photos of the spores. I can tell this is a cortinarius. I can't really tell you how I can tell. Just something about looking at the stipe and the color of the spores. There's three of them right there. Just leave them be. I don't mess with cortinarius. Some of them are poison. We're out of the woods and onto a logging road now. Maybe we can find some different species growing alongside the road. I can't believe I haven't found any Matsutake out here. This is Matsutake habitat, but nothing so far. Lots of Lucaria lucata though. Here's some Lactarius deliciosus. Oh, these are really far gone. This is a good Halloween mushroom, the way it starts out orange and stains red and then turns green. There's another one over here. A 
We've got a little rushula down here. I don't know what it is. It's kind of small for the shrimp. It's just one of many red rushulas. So hard to ID. Here's some giant Lucaria lucata. They're just so variable in their form. I like these gills. I think they're pretty. I think these are Nematoloma fasciculari, even though they're not growing in a giant cluster on a log. I'm not sure what they look like. Sulfur tufts. And they are quite poison. You probably won't die if you eat them, but you'll have convulsions possibly. Nematoloma fasciculari, but there's an edible one called Nematoloma capnoides. And I ate some of those the other day. I was sure of the ID, and then after I went to bed, I started thinking, and then I wasn't sure of the ID, and then I started reading stuff on the internet, and then I started having a panic attack. And then Michael Bug answered my ID question and said, no, those are definitely not sulfur tufts, and they look like conifer tufts. So then I felt better, had a beer, went back to bed. But it really wasn't worth it. I'm not going to experiment with cavanoides, hyphaloma, nematoloma, fasciculari, whatever they are anymore. The cabinoides are supposed to have grayer gills. I think this is the sulfur tuft. I'm going to pick some that I'm sure are sulfur tufts and get a spore print so I can get a better idea. But I don't intend to try eating cabinoides again because it didn't taste that good. So it's just not even worth the stress of wondering if I got the right one. Obviously I got the right one because I didn't get sick, but I still got really stressed out about it. I was so sure of my ID when I ate it, it's just later I started thinking. I don't know why I did that. Okay, here's another of that same bolete. And over here too. The same one that I put in my pocket and is now broken its cap off of. So maybe I'll just leave it here. It's not going to sprout now. The cap won't grow now. There's a lot of these. Let's see if it's buggy. Yeah, it doesn't look too buggy. Yeah, I need to figure out what the heck those are. They gotta be a swillus, right? Everything is a swillus or a king belief. <laughs> Everything. There are so many of them though. Wow. I know they're not the fiber king. I know that much. But what are they? I just don't know. They gotta be swillus. Look how big those pores are. Yeah, those have gotta be swillus. And some people eat swillus. They have a terrible texture, but you can powder them, I guess, and turn them into mush mushroom broth or something. I don't know. Eastern Europeans eat a lot of swillus. I guess they know something I don't know when it comes to cooking them and making them nice. It's wet and cold. My fingers are freezing. Mushroom season is starting to draw to a close here. Here's more of the Lucaria lucata. But it's dome shaped. It's younger. But some are flat when they're this size too. Very variable mushroom. Lucaria lucata. The deceiver. Here's more Lucaria lucata, but this is the amethyst variety. A bit more purplish. Be nice if these tasted good, as abundant as they are. Here is what we used to at least call Helvella lacunasta. I think it's called something different now. I like eating these. Uh, some people say they're toxic because they might have, hi Bella, they might have an uh, ingredient that's in gyrometra because they look a little bit like gyrometra. I've done a lot of research and I don't think they have any proof that it contains that toxic chemical in it. And they're quite tasty. They have a texture of bacon when you fry them up. 
So I eat them, but I only eat a few a year. Everything in moderation, right? Bella, do you think you're going in the house like that? I got news for you. I'm amazed she didn't just walk right through the middle of that puddle. Maybe she learned after falling in the last one. We are back to my property line and still on this trail. How cool is that? Next we'll go up to my yard and I'll show you a few cool mushrooms growing in my yard. This looks like it could be a shrimp rushula. And I love shrimp rushula. But they're so tricky. I just always do the nibble and spit test on them. It's got a sticky cap like it should. It's about the right color. I don't see any blushing on the stem. But all that really matters is if it's not bitter when you taste it raw. Look at here. Amanita muscaria. Here's one you don't want to eat. It can make you hallucinate and apparently it's a really bad trip. Plus it's also got some poisons in it. But this is our mushroom archetype. This is the Mario mushroom. Maybe the ancient Soma mushroom. And I guess it can be used to kill flies too. Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric. What a gorgeous mushroom. I'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully it gets to open up here without getting kicked over. Maybe I should take it home and put it in a glass. Then I could watch it open up and for sure it wouldn't get kicked over. All anyway, right, let's grab our shrimp rushulas, shrimp rushula contenders, and head back to the house. Just past this Lacteria deliciosus. So here we are in my yard. And in my yard we've got Gomphidius subrosius which is a beautiful mushroom that doesn't taste good. I think these are just gorgeous with their decurrent gray gills. That means they grow down the stem and the yellow base and the purple top. I love these. I just love these, but not to eat, only to look at. And they are a parasite on the swillus mushroom. Oh look, what kind of mushroom is this? It's a softball mushroom and a baseball mushroom. The previous owners of this property had so many balls. It's like every time I go in the woods around my house, I find another ball. Still in my front yard, I'm going to show you my pride and joy. My very own white chanterelle patch right here. This one's pretty soggy. I don't think I'll pick it. I've just been watching it grow. White chanterelle. Cantharella subalbidus growing in my yard. I've got one other patch of them on the other side of my yard. Let's go check them out. Right over here, I've got them marked with a yellow flag. These are actually still coming up. So some of these are still fresh enough to eat because they're youngish. Some of them are a bit far gone too. But let's pluck one here. Cantharella subalbidus, the white chanterelle. Delicious. This one's pretty soggy though. I'll probably leave it or maybe throw it into another place in my yard. These two patches are only about 50 feet apart. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same mycelium underground. Feeling both of these. Kind of wish I'd gotten out here to pick these sooner. I didn't realize they were still coming up until yesterday. Hopefully these come back here every year. It's been such a great year for chanterelles. Who knows if they'll actually come back on other years that aren't great years. But there they are. How cool is that to have these in my own front yard? I'm loving it. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our soggy Halloween mushroom hunt. Once the night is through and the clock strikes, Halloween will be over, but don't worry, we'll all be back again next year to strike fear. <laughs> <laughs>